Joining us now, Paragon Cause, also known as Jay Bonaparte, Michelle Optoff. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. It's great being here. So now we're filming this at the East Coast Music Awards 2022. Hopping, busy. You're also parents of a new baby. Busy time for you, COVID. It's, that's an understatement, but yes, it's busy time <laughs> for us especially, but everybody, it's been a crazy few years, but definitely been busy. You haven't let uh, child rearing interfere with your creativity and your projects? No way, because we want to, we got we to lead by example, right? So I think we got to, we got to keep up with our hobbies and, and our creativity so that we can foster that for, for the next generation. Sleep deprivation sometimes can fuel the creativity. Definitely, definitely. It definitely creates darker songs, which is what we like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure your uh, the impressive um, the pedigree of your producers, they also ha do lend toward the darker Definitely. side. Some of them. Yeah. You want to explain who it is that you have worked with? Yeah, yeah. So a few years ago, we met and became really good friends with a guy named Suna Rose Wagner, and he's known for uh, being the lead singer songwriter of the Ravenettes, who are one of our favorite bands. So we just got you know in a great situation where we met him and. He came up to our place and met each other, spent 10 days in our basement, recorded an album. Two weeks later, we had so much fun. He came back again a second time, recorded another album. And so basically every year we all get together, the three of us, Michelle and I and Suna, and record music. And so he just- It started as a joke though, because you, you were like, maybe you can help produce our next album. Yeah, just... on Twitter. It and he's like, sure. And Twitter. we're like, what? what? <laughs> no and way. Next thing you know, he's at our front door in the middle of winter banging there. and you know, with his boots on, so, and his long black coat. And that, and that, we just became really good friends. And now we're good friends, we talk all the time and share ideas. And so because of him, he, um, his manager introduced us to someone named Liam Howe, who was from a band called the Sneaker Pimps. And so, again, big producer and just liked our music and uh, spoke via distance. He's in England and during COVID just wanted to try some different things. So, you know, we, got online and did a Zoom meeting with Liam and before you know it had a few tunes with him and last but not least someone who is an idol for me um, Eric Avery and he was the bass player from Jane's Addiction and so back in the 90s he was just somebody who really opened my eyes to music pure music and that punk rock attitude even though he didn't play punk rock you can still have that attitude and he uh, liked our music and again played bass on a song helped produce a song with us and so it was an incredible experience on this particular album definitely. So it's safe to say that it's been the exact opposite. The, the restrictions almost uh, fueled connections. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've found a way to make, make the best of a situation, for sure. A lot of people sitting around looking to, you know, to kind of find a way to just get out of this mentality of being stuck at home. And I think all these people wanted to do it, and that's the approach we took, and it worked for us at least. And I, I know they all had a fun time doing it as well. Now, you are from Atlanta, Canada, but you're based in Ontario? Moved to Ottawa. Yeah, hey, we're in Ottawa right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a Cape Bretoner, born and raised. Um, you know, you can't, you can take, what, what, I think you said it the other day, yeah, you right? Could, you could take yeah, yeah, you the Cape Bretoner out of Cape Breton. Can't take, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then take... lived in Halifax for my whole life and moved to Ottawa for a few years. But to be totally honest, you know, Mich Michelle's originally from Ontario, but she's now a Maritimer, and we're trying to get yeah. back here because we miss it so much. As soon as I breathe that salty air, like my stress goes away. And... Yeah, it's, I'm a Maritimer, even though we live in Ottawa. So right, and of course, because of that, you have collaborated and worked with and performed with icons here in the East Coast community. Yeah, I, I've been I've been lucky. So in Halifax, my first real live performance was playing with Rose Cousins, and I remember back then, I'm like, I got to keep tagging along with this person because she's good. <laughs> and so I played bass for her, even though I had no clue what I was doing back then. And I just said, keep writing songs. I'll keep playing bass until you find someone better. But I knew she was going to be a star once once I met with, once we met. And we went to university together and became really good friends. And of course, think people like Ben Ross, who was a drummer for um, Thrush Hermit and Drew Yamato, who was the guitar player for the Super Friends. So I had a nice connection to these classic and you know Halifax uh, musicians and I've stick, stuck with that and uh, I, I still keep in touch with all these people and Ryan Ryan um, Ryan Pierce who's he's also like we had a band called Servo back in the 90s and with it just you know the, the, the maritime music scene is special and now that we're in Ottawa not to disparage it it's different you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the maritime scene the east coast music is just a different level like the the art, the passion that goes into it here. And I think Michelle has become aware of that as well. And I miss that so much. The talent here is incredible. Mm 
Mm. Yeah, it, it probably was a bit of a surprise when you first came here and recognized <sighs> the breadth of talent, the scope, uh, the genres that are happening, and the collaborations. It's a highly diverse musical community. Mm -hmm. I, I, for me, it was just so, uh, it, it felt like home because this is the kind of thing I didn't really know existed, but when you actually see it, you're like, wow, everyone's really is this genuine. Yeah. They, you just make friends with everyone you meet. No one's like standoffish and staring at their phone. And I'm, I don't know, I just, I really feel at home. And, and as far as the music goes, like everyone is so passionate about it. You, you meet families and they all play instruments and they all rotate and it's like this, thing that you do instead of other boring things. You're all playing music and like that's that's the kind of thing we have going on in our house too. So it's perfect. Yeah, it's uh, not all of us here in Atlantic Canada have that creativity and that ability to express it. But for those of us who are, I'm around those people and I'm like, wow, what is that like? And I'm always in awe. And I think that that's what is so beautiful about the Atlantic Canada uh, experiences that we are either super talented or we are super fans a hundred percent the the, pa the passion in both the musicians and the listener is equal i yeah. really believe that here mm -hmm. people love it you know you can't go anywhere without seeing live music whether it's the boardwalk to a kitchen party to a bar or whatever it's everywhere in every, love it. in every, every community, community yeah. right it's yeah. not just happening in the major centers it's yeah. happening literally everywhere like you say yep. on decks uh, somebody's backyard, all of a sudden things happen and morph into an event. If you drive up to Northern Cape Breton, you go into this little coffee shop and there's like a six, seven, eight year old, they get up on stage and they play the fiddle and sing and they're like incredible. Right. And that, that's just what they do. It's just fun for them. It's amazing, the talent yeah. and it's the people there love it and support yeah. it. It's amazing. I think what we have learned a lot in the last couple of years is just how important music is for us, not just as obviously musicians and having an audience, but for us as uh, as fans to be able to experience it because it is a connective 100%. Uh, experience. I think we can speak to that as music fans as well. You know, you discover all these new musicians that maybe you wouldn't have discovered if you weren't sitting at home, but it's uh, it, it really is important for sure. Yeah, culture is, is important. Definitely. Yeah. So what is up next as far as uh, big projects because you know we are on the road now already oh, yeah. to the east coast music awards the 35th uh, in halifax uh, in the interim what will we see happen with paragon it's a very good question because i already tell Miss michelle we got to get on some new music because i want to be in halifax next year yeah we will but we the first thing we did was we um we worked with a few other artists and we uh, did some remixes so we, we've been approached to do some producing for some musicians so one of them that's coming out this year that should be really fun is the band Berlin asked us to do a re, uh, remix of one of their songs, and I always have to ask Michelle Berlin. Take my breath away. So Berlin, Berlin is famous is super for super cool. Yeah, so that's a pretty incredible experience. And then, apart from that, we've been working on a lot more songs, and it's just a matter of getting Cinna Rose back to Ottawa so we can put them down pretty quick. We record really fast. We can do a whole album in seven to ten days, start to finish. Yep. The three of us just bang it out. We like our focus. Seven in the morning, seven at night, glass of wine get ready for the next day. Yep. And so that's our thing. And we hope to have something so we can uh, showcase something unique next year in Halifax and get back home and do something fun. Love it. You're going to be performing for us. What song are you going, have you chosen? So it was actually written before all of this, but it's called Making Up for Lost Time. It's very ironic. We recorded before COVID and it could really? be more fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Jay, Michelle, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been much. wonderful. Thank you.
With us now, Ruben Rake. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for uh, having us. Thanks for having us. Andrew, here. Josh, welcome to our moment under the lights, which is something that you experienced last recently at the East Coast Music Awards as Songwriter of the Year. You, yeah. We did, we did, yeah. It was, uh, it was great. It was great to be back in a conference setting. It's been a few years since we've been able to uh, do the Music NL or ECMA or any other awards and conferencing, being able to network with people, and, and it's 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 been great. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so Josh, so Josh is the introvert. I'm the extrovert. We uh, yeah. we delegate, and yeah. I think that is the that is the key to our grand success that we've had in this music industry, <laughs> is uh, that we we uh, we're so good at uh, at doing what uh, what what we're what we're good at. So Josh sometimes will hide in the hotel room, and I'm now just making us all the money while we're making. <laughs> but as soon as you said that, I was like, no, no, ECMA is like, oh, all the trauma of just being around that place. It, it, it's, it's a, it's, great it's a difficult, it's difficult, and, I, and obviously with COVID too. Uh, right. You know, trying to navigate again, being around big groups of people. Right. Uh, no mask mandate, those things. I mean, we're, we're all going to be slowly getting used to that I think All right. so anyway it was great and I appreciate you mentioning that because that uh, getting an ECMA is a is a is great to be recognized in that company great to be recognized but again you know songwriter of the year is oh that's is the pinnacle that's a huge honor that uh, yeah. and we're we're a pretty stripped back uh, band uh, or duo uh, it's it's the whole singer songwriter uh, kind of title is that's like we like to say we're a music band and, and we write uh, songs together and we make albums just to based off whatever we have on the table so uh, to give us uh, that label is that's, that's the highest honor we could receive so it Absolutely. was it was really nice mm -hmm. and, and motivation to continue for with the crafting of your new album I always need validation yeah, yeah. It's true. yeah. well <laughs> it, it's good to be well, validation at least it reminds you that yeah you're not doing it for for just yourselves because there is an audience out there there are uh, people that are ready for what it is that you have to offer. No yeah. question. Close to quitting our day jobs. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, we we'll just go into moonlighting in the evenings. Yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, listen, music. the validation is great. Uh, yeah, we would be lying if 
we said it didn't feel great to go accept a piece of hardware to take home, um, you know. Uh, but yeah, it does. It, it helps. It helped us when we left Fredericton and went back to town and started to write again over the summer um, to get back into the writing mode. And we kind of took that week off and we went into the conference setting, uh, kind of left the writing mode that we were in and then went back into town, got right back into it and we wrote some uh, what were songs that we're really happy with. Yeah. Now, when it comes to that uh, collaboration, how mm -hmm. does that, what's that dynamic like? So it's always song by song, I guess yeah. we'll say. Yeah, it's always evolving. Uh, it always mm -hmm. changes. Uh, and like if you keep doing the same thing over, it can get stale. And uh, also, yeah, it's uh, maybe I'm pretty vague on that, but you know, we it's a collaborative approach. And I mean, again, with happen. delegating tasks, I mean, Josh is the kind of the chief songwriter in terms of lyrics. He'll come to me with a chord progression and an idea, and then we kind of go from there. Um, generally, I've spent my time in music making sure I could be the best kind of accompaniment at, to a songwriter as I can type of thing. Right. So that's kind of, that's the Cole's notes, I guess, yeah. on, on what we do. And again, but it, it, it evolves and it's not always that. So it's, uh, because like Josh said, if, if it was always the same thing, then that wouldn't, that would get stale and then people probably would stop listening. Right. Mm -hmm. And people kind of were forced to stop listening during the pandemic and a lot of performers turned to performing online, doing virtual yeah, shows. Yeah. Uh, did, given yeah. what I understand of your style, that it would be far out of the we, norm. We, so were you adapting to that? No, no, we, we did terrible. Uh, but I'll say we got a raise uh, when the pandemic happened because we got a thing called Serb. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was great. Uh, it made way more money, so uh, we were rolling. We were we were rolling in it, making bank. Uh, oh, yeah. we were making yeah. bank. Oh, we paid it all. So back. we didn't have to worry about performing. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, in all honesty, I don't like watching online concerts. Uh, right. It just seems really dry. Like I can just go watch people on YouTube, anyways. So watching, I mean, it's it's a nice sentiment, and and that's great. But uh, for us, in general, like, there's a lot of storytelling. And did someone laugh at the joke? I don't know. How do you get a response to what you're doing? And also, uh, uh, we like to tell a lot of stories. And if we tell the stories, the, the, the gag's up. Everyone knows why well, come see our show anyways after that. We can't do, we can't do two online shows. Because uh, we saw one, you, you saw the show. Uh, right. We got to come in person. Fair play. And, and uh, more than that as well is just the way we feed from an audience, just the way we, we play our music differently to an audience, you know, not if we're playing to a camera, it's just different, you know. So um, the touring thing back in gear now, uh, the new album, once it's out, you're going to take it to the people? Yeah. For, absolutely. I mean, touring for us, um, you know, we, we don't necessarily just tour when we're in an album cycle we tour as much as we can as yeah. much as if any if there's a if if, we, if they want us we're coming and josh yeah. and i are we're lean on the road we want to be on the road all year long if we can particularly this fall now moving into november we've got a pretty significant tour lined up between st john's uh, to ontario and back um, then it'll get us into christmas by then we'll have a single out a couple singles and we'll start our album campaign i also feel that like being a, a, a I like to say we're a music band, uh, not like a folk band, but if you were to label a folk band, I don't think like the whole idea of, uh, of an album cycle, it just, I, th I think we kind of are, are a bit of an outlier in that aspect that we don't need to, I mean, we do want to constantly make albums and make new music, but I don't think we need to always be pushing the next record. You know? Right. That's how I feel personally anyways. I don't, right. yeah, don't want to speak for both of us. No, but, no, you, no, that's okay. I believe it. <laughs> so in a moment you are going to perform a song for us yeah. and I know, understand that yeah. Every song has a story. Yeah. So, will you share the story with us before? Yeah, I'll share a story. Uh, but now I'm going to give it away. I'm, I'm kind of nervous about giving away the story uh, on on live performance. But uh, okay, uh, this song is. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, we, I don't know if we've mentioned that I'm originally from uh, British Columbia. I'm from Prince George, BC, and I moved out to Newfoundland ten years ago. And uh, my. Uh, my sister, before the pandemic happened, said she was thinking of moving out to, to St. John's to go to school at Memorial University. And I said, well, uh, uh, okay, uh, if you're going to come, i got a spare room. You can stay with me. You can save a lot of money. 
I'll show you around, uh, I'll introduce you to some people. Uh, uh, and she said, okay. She came out and uh, after, you know, like <laughs> two weeks we were with each other every day, you know. Uh, we got a lot of time together, uh, a little too much. And I, eventually I said, okay, I got to go up my own and do my own thing. I kind of uh, released her into the world, you know. And uh, about two weeks after, I, I, uh, I saw her back at the house and I asked her, I said, you know, how's St. John's treating you? And uh, she, uh, she said, oh, great. It's, it's, it's so, so great. And then she stopped and then she looked really sad. And uh, she said, I just really want a friend. <laughs> and uh, I, it was really pathetic. It was really pathetic. <laughs> Anyways, this is a, I always say this is a, a song about my, uh, or inspired by my loser kid sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. He's a great big brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was going someplace sweet and then it veered. Well, yeah. this, this, Fun this, stuff. Uh, yeah. That makes me want to listen to it even more. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ruben Rake, uh, of course, Andrew and Josh. Yeah. Good luck. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure. excuse though your eyes are fixed on the singer now I saw you scan the room nodding hard just to let us know you love the old time tunes buddy I get it I've sold that excuse though you'd be wasting somebody else's time no need to get in line I can spare you some of mine Fraser mouth took to the smell of the sulfur haze and then I coughed it out. I fell in love by the cottonwood, but the wind it blew us down. I fell in love with someone, then with someone else. Though you'd be wasting somebody else's time, no need. Get in line, I can spare you some of mine. want something else oh don't the years feel wasted always come here by myself but I'll be back tomorrow and 
talk to someone else Though he'd be wasting somebody else's time No need to get in line I can spare you 